Hello, happy Monday. I am Meredith and I am here with our message for the 30th, the final day of September, 2024. We've got bone fire on the tarot. I, I woke up in the middle of the night last night and <laughs> specifically got the message, use bone fire. <laughs> Thank you guides. All right. Uh, I also think this one's kind of backed by popular demand. Almost everybody loves this deck as much as I do. So here it is. Yay. We have the sun in Libra and the moon is in Virgo. We've got our retrogrades still going on. Some of those are going to start to shift and change soon, which is nice. And on Wednesday, we have a new moon and a solar eclipse happening. I have to look into that one. Uh, I don't have enough information on it to tell you more about it, though I'm letting you know now so you can all go do your own investigation. And you know what we say about eclipse energy, it's rare and it's uncommon. We have another astrological thing to consider. Again, something else I need to read up on. We have an asteroid uh, shadowing the moon right now. So it's giving the uh, impression that we have two moons. And some astrologers that I caught on Instagram over the weekend are talking about how uh, we're moving into uh, an astrological period where the support of our manifestations gets a, a real dose of rare and uncommon energy. So you want to be focused on really making moves and changes to your highest and greatest benefit. So look into all of that for yourselves. I will do the same in the meantime and hopefully come back with some more information for you. But let's take a look at what's going on in the energy atmosphere today. We're starting off strong with a set of three cards. What's on offer to us? How's it all moving and shaking out there? Our first card is, hey, looky there, back again, the Knight of Swords. I think this is the third time we've seen this particular night show up in the past, let's say, week or so of readings. This is not a night that we see often, and one of the great qualities of this night is that there's no messing around with this energy. It's very direct. So say what you mean, mean what you say, do what you say you're going to do, follow through is really important, and... Uh, also, I feel that there's an energy of, there's an easier way, a more direct way. And there's no no need to take the long way around the barn. Just walk right through the middle of it is, is my feeling here. So get to the heart of the matter. Get to the point. Be direct. Don't fool around and draw things out for yourself. This is a very quick and fast moving energy. So if you're finding that your energy atmosphere is moving swiftly, go with that flow. Don't fight it. Next we have, beautiful, yeah, look what awaits you, the Ten of Cups. <laughs> Ace of Cups to the power of ten right there. This is major, lovely fulfillment energy. And it's a celebration, a full-spectrum celebration of our life experience. So let's get into the living of, celebrating of all of this gorgeous energy directly. Third card in this set. <laughs> yeah, this is why you don't want to mess around. You have the tower energy here. I actually feel quite delighted to see this. And I'll share with you on a personal note. Every now and then I just pick up a deck and I, I'll ask, what do I most need to know right now? Whatever falls out per usual, like our daily reads here, I'll take a look at. And I've seen a whole lot of the tower for myself. I will also share that in the personal one-on-one -on -one readings that I do with folks, I've seen a whole lot of the tower. So we're making a lot of changes and some of them are surprising to us. This is where the universe gets involved because we've dragged our feet probably for years, some of us decades and we haven't made a move we haven't made a change and you know what happens the universal flow will take care of it for you if you don't and that's not necessarily something you want to deal with though in my own tower experiences i'll I, i'm actually quite surprised because there are some things i thought i had uh brought to fulfillment or let's just say closure or i thought i understood 
uh, some of the things that have unfolded in my own tower moments and the universe had something else up its sleeve. I've had some aha moments with tower energy. So I like that we have this swift moving direct energy with the Knight of Swords paired with the Ten of Cups flowing into the tower. So this is for your benefit. And if you even have a suspicion that you've put off taking a look at something, speaking something out loud, addressing something in self-relationship, be prepared because with a new moon and a solar eclipse upcoming, you know, right on the heels of that lunar eclipse we had not that long ago, there's a lot of rare and uncommon energies and we're going to have a rare and uncommon opportunity to look at things in a completely different uh, perspective. So be prepared for towers. And I would also encourage you to see towers as a really positive opportunity. This is not a doom and gloom card in tarot. Ultimately, it's for your benefit to level some old boundary or level some old foundation that really doesn't support or serve what you're co-creating with the divine in your manifestations. There's likely a wheelbarrow full of shit that's just got to go. So do what you have to do to make way uh, for what it is you're creating. And remember, you know, we've got this asteroid shadowing the moon right now. And that unique opportunity for really unusual manifestation. So the tower plays an important role in that astrological alignment. So I'd say heed the message, do some investigation for yourself, and maybe ask your own guides and angels, what more can I know about? And whatever that topic is for you in self-relationship, and then ask your guides and angels to gently reveal and show to you where you need to invest some of your energy in yourself so that your tower moment isn't necessarily a shock. Don't underestimate the power of a shock and an awe moment for yourself from the tower either. I've had a couple of those myself and uh, I needed that. I needed that kick in the pants to take a step and be motivated. So be prepared for that is all I'm all I'm encouraging here. <laughs> Next. Oh yeah, there it is. Nine of Swords. There's a cringe card in tarot. If you want to cringe over one, this is it. This is the one that keeps you awake in the middle of the night. And I had this myself two nights ago. Saturday night, I was awake almost a whole stinking night. And my head was full of thoughts. Yes, and that's what the, the Nine of Swords will bring to every single one of us. And... uh well, it's kind of cool because I took my own advice there and I, I didn't overreact to any of it. And it was, it's informative for all of us to have a nine of swords moment. So I'm not suggesting you get all anxious and worked up. Take a look at the artwork on this card. You know, this, this character is looking through their hands. You know, they're focusing in on something. There's a lot more to focus on. The tower is absolutely going to show it to us. So I love that the card is here because it's saying, don't get fixated on what you think you know. Let the universe inform you and you're far better off to ask your own guides, angels, ancestors to show you something uh, that you could consider in a different perspective or to take a different attitude with. So eliminate the stress or the anxiety of this card and recognize that you've got some stuff to deal with and just deal with it and be loving about it because you're creating a Ten of Cups experience on a whole new foundation because the old foundation tower is falling away. So you need something fresh underneath that Ten of Cups and it's going to happen fast. So get in the flow with it. Yeah, oh, well see, that just backs it up, doesn't it? There's the moon, a completely different light spectrum from which to view your current circumstances. This is also a card that puts us deeply in tune with our intuition. So be listening to your intuitive voice. What's your gut telling you right now? And are you listening? And are you taking action on what your intuitive read is in the moment? Far better it is for all of us to listen to the intuition and the guidance that comes our way, especially if we're asking to be shown from the divine all and our guides and ancestors. This is a very spiritual time. 
So do whatever it takes for you. If you like to sit in a dark room with one candle lit and meditate, you go do that. <laughs> if you like to run around outside barefoot with your arms wide open, screaming like a wild banshee, go do that. Just do it is, is the message here. So let's, let's do whatever we need to do to bring out our inner fire for what's on offer to us and let's meet that boldly and bravely uh, in the now moment. Hmm. Yes, another beautiful card with uh, huge intuitive energies on it. This is the Six of Cups. We talked about this one in a different way last week. So I'm going to bring it up again. And this is the deck. I even mentioned this deck when we saw this card last week. I love the handoff energy here. And I feel like this character is our soulful presence. And this character is our waking earthly consciousness here on, on the planet right? And I feel like there's a great handoff happening between the soul and the waking consciousness. So this is called the soulmate card. And one of the things I mentioned last week was considering a soulmate connection between your soulful presence and your ego awareness. So reconsider that because the ego awareness can have us focusing very hard on one particular thing and then becoming stressed or anxious about it. And there's a much bigger uh, spectrum to be gazing at Hello Ten of Cups with a great big rainbow on it. This is a full spectrum of light, right? And we're being offered an intuitive perspective from which to view our world. Be looking at things through your third eye, not your two physical eyes. <laughs> consider that and do consider the soulmate relationship within self-awareness soulfully and ego together work with them harmoniously and then you eliminate stress and anxiety off the nine of swords over here and you're able to look at your own rubble field from the tower and not be overwhelmed by that but instead to be whelmed by it because it's making way for a gorgeous energy in that ten of cups Ooh, yeah. And then we have beautiful, the magician. This is all about manifestation. So the card is confirming everything that's been spoke, excuse me, the cards are, as we close out this main part of the reading, are confirming everything we were talking about over here at the beginning of the reading. So we're making magic. We're making miracles on our foundation, on our 10 of cups foundation. And as we stand on that gorgeous foundation, we're receiving more intuition, more guidance, and we're able to see with greater clarity where we have narrowed our field of vision through that nine of swords. And we're much more interested in seeing the fullness of the 10 of cups, which is likely going to reveal some tower stuff that requires your attention. And the Knight of swords is here saying, just be direct and deal with it. Stop kicking rocks and stop delaying and whatever it is you do to not pay attention and give yourself the love that you require to fully embrace your Ten of Cups lifestyle. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. How is the universe serving us behind the scenes and helping us out? <laughs> okay, there she is, Queen of Cups. Could we get more intuitive here? The intuition message is huge with the moon, with the six of cups, and with this queen who's, you know, holding the ace of cups there. It's a big deal. We're talking about our love, bliss, joy, happiness expanding in a ripple effect through our sphere of influence in our world and blessing our foundation. This is the perfect energy atmosphere for which we can take a look at our tower stuff and love it and thank it and have appreciation for it. There's no room for criticism here. Three of Wands, yes, because we're building a whole new foundation, as mentioned before, that is so supportive of our Ten of Cups lifestyle, right? So the Three of Wands is a bit of a dreamy card for me in tarot because some of the things that we'd like on our foundation are not yet here. And we are in the act of co-creating with the divine. So we're making way by following our intuition and doing what needs to be done. Yeah, look at this. So now we have the Nine of Cups. 
dreams come true, wishes are fulfilled. This is what's happening behind the scenes. This is why you want to deal with your tower, your nine of swords, and take your hands away from your eye. Z. <laughs> you know, focus, the focus on the one thing is very limiting. And that one thing may be something that you consider a limitation in your life. But there's a much bigger picture on offer to us. So look up, look around. Isn't there a song that goes that way? Holy cow. Now we have the high priestess. All we need now is the death card. Let's hope it comes out for us. <laughs> the high priestess, she's showing us the way. It's not going to be difficult for you to follow through on your intuitive voice. And I know sometimes that comes through very softly and subtly but it never stops coming through. That's the thing about our intuition. It will not quit. And we may have turned a deaf ear to our intuition, which is what's created some of this Tower Nine of Swords stuff. And you're in an atmosphere now where you can't turn a deaf ear to it and you're better off just being with it, finding your gratitude and appreciation because it's shaping who you are to even create a Ten of Cups lifestyle here. Next we have, oh, that seals it. Look at that. Ace of Cups proper. All on its own. Add it to the nine. You've got the Ten of Cups twice. So you've got the Ten of Cups in your face right now in your waking consciousness. And you've got the Ten of Cups in your third eye vision behind the scenes from the divine all. We are being focused to look at the whole picture. Our worldview of our life experience and our personal foundation and what we're doing with it upon it underneath that i'll stop but here's the beautiful lover's card union harmony within self relationship ten of coins gorgeous this is the everything card this is what we're on about so this is all worth doing give it your love angel answers if you got a question a query need some further guidance from your own guides put it to this deck let the cards answer you in some way. Well, like that, be assertive. Most especially with that tower energy, nine of swords, be assertive. <laughs> I get, oh my goodness. Look for a sign kind of popped out sideways while I was shuffling, but look what's right underneath it. Listen to your intuition. I'm taking it because they were sitting there together and this reading has... Uh, focused us over and over again to our intuitive guidance, our soulful presence. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Oh, it's fantastic. Improving health. This is on all levels. Consider this improving your well-being overall. That's what we're all up to. And that's why it's worthy to take a look at the Tower and the Nine of Swords. I know we've all got a past and we've all got stuff we'd rather not look at. But if that stuff is still influencing your now and it really has no business influencing your now, love the heck out of it and let it go. Let it be transformed because you've got so much more here going on. No need to worry. That's beautiful. Oh, and underneath that, I'm going to take that one too, just for the whole Pono Pono factor. There's the forgiveness card again. What's Ho Pono Pono, you ask? <laughs> I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. That's what's required in your Nine of Swords and your Tower experience. Don't underestimate the power of the Ho'oponopono. Sometimes there are loose ends that, you know, will never be tied up for any of us. And many times I hear in readings with people, I'd really like some closure for X, Y, or Z, and it's just not possible. Either the person they'd like the closure with has moved on to another plane of existence, or there's just no hope of ever speaking with that person again. But you have the power of Ho'oponopono, which is the forgiveness prayer. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Let go. Be here now. Be the magic now. 
Final word on the reading today. Angels and ancestors, how is our soulful presence? Informing our waking consciousness. Six of cups. <sighs> All righty. Oh, we have more than one today. We have the medicine guardian. Be open to healing. Be open to healing information. I like that. It's going to be channeled. You're going to channel it. Then we have the spring card. See, your seeds grow. Ooh, that could be a tower moment for some of us too. We may have planted some seed thoughts years ago. And perhaps through Nine of Swords life experiences, we haven't been tending them. But in this unique astrological atmosphere, things are starting to grow. Dreams are coming true. Remember Nine of Cups? Wishes are being fulfilled. They're coming from those seed thoughts. And then the final word on it all is the water guardian. Connect with your, oh, I can't read this. Ooh, yeah. Connect with your emotions, of course. Don't fear your emotions. Open your arms wide and your heart too. And just let them be. Let them flow. Whatever they are. <laughs> no limits, remember? Peace, love, happiness, joy. Namaste. Have the most awesome Monday ever.